Hello, and welcome back to Sinister Sisters. Hello. I'm Shrimp, and I am your True Crime Tuesday host, and it is True Crime Tuesday, and I am joined by my personal sister. What is your name, and what do you do? My name is Kat, and I do Soapbox Sunday episodes on Sundays. Woo woo! Most recently about Six Flags New Orleans and the fact that it's abandoned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should do every season, we should do a musical episode like they do on Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think the people want that. The people are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyways welcome back figured out that my mic was broken the last like two episodes that's why i sounded like shit but we're here now Better we're here ever. now we're mic'd up we're thriving double mic'd up on a tuesday <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking about Cynthia Kaufman and James Marlowe. Have you heard of them? I have not, no. Are we surprised? No, we are not. No, we are not. <laughs> okay, excellence. So before we get into the episode properly, please follow us on Instagram at SinisterSisters.podcast, on TikTok at SinisterSistersPodcast, YouTube at SinisterSistersPodcast, and email us at SinisterSistersPodcast at gmail.com. We have nope. a case request form. SinisterSistersPod at gmail.com We have a case request form in the Instagram bio, the episode description, and the YouTube video description. And everything else that I just said will also be in those places if you didn't get it. Okay, so... Cynthia Kaufman and James Marlowe, they were convicted of two murders in 1986, and the content- Are you going to do the con- <laughs> <laughs> You Sorry. have to leave that in, because <laughs> we had a conversation on one of our very first episodes about how it's very, very obvious that Kat is the oldest sibling because she just <laughs> takes over. I thought you it was started. another example. The content warnings for this video are murder, rape, domestic abuse, abortion, religion, controlling behaviours, teenage pregnancy, and a few mentions of neo-Nazism. Okay. Born in 1962, Cynthia Kaufman was the privileged daughter of a St. Louis businessman raised by her parents as a devout Catholic. Abortion was not an option when she got pregnant at the age of 17 and she was forced by her parents into a loveless marriage and she endured five years of domestic abuse before she left home and fled west, traveling with little more than her car and the clothes on her back. So she was forced to marry this man that got her pregnant when she was 17 and he, you know, didn't treat her very well. I don't have any information on the man, so I don't know who he is or what he does or anything. Okay. So she ran away and she wound up in Page, Arizona, where she waited tables in a diner and she moved in with a local man after several months, weeks. She moved in with a local man after knowing him for several weeks. In the fall of 1985, they were evicted from their apartment after numerous complaints from neighbors and their drunken all night parties. On May 8th, 1986, Cynthia and her boyfriend were stopped for running a stop sign in Barstow, California. Police found a loaded gun and a quantity of methamphetamines in her purse, but she was released on her own recognizance and the charges were sub subsequently dropped. It was like her first ever offense. Okay. So they were nice to her, maybe because she was white. Um, her boyfriend, at the time, wound up serving six weeks in the county jail, and it was during one of Cynthia's visits that she met his cellmate, and that is the man who would change her life forever. 
And that man is James Gregory Marlowe, who was doing time for the theft of his sixth, sixth wife's car when Cynthia came to visit his cellmate. Born mm-hmm. in 1957, he had been a dedicated thief from the age of 10 and was committed to Folsom Prison in California in 1980 for a series of home invasions and knife point robberies. Marlowe served three years on that conviction, earning himself a reputation as the Folsom Wolf, that's what he called himself, Mm. and got multiple prison tattoos announcing his membership, his proud membership to the Aryan Brotherhood. Great guy, by all accounts. Seems seems like a guy I'd love to spend some time with in Mm -hmm. a prison cell when Mm -hmm. I'm visiting my boyfriend. Mm Mm-hmm. Really weird. I mean, very obviously she doesn't really have great taste because her boyfriend is also in prison. But Yeah, but like six weeks I, and three years. Yeah. There's a difference there. And I guess like with a drug conviction, it's a little bit different than a uh home invasion and knife point robberies. That's just like ugh. Yeah. Drugs could be is probably an addiction. Yes. Anyways, it was love at first sight for Cynthia and James. Her previous boyfriend instantly forgotten. It doesn't say what happened between the cellmates after this, like, event of womanness happened. Like, so assumably, it just kind of was okay, which is wild, because they continued to be in prison together for a bit. Yeah. That's weird. It, it, yeah. Oh well, though. Um, her boyfriend was forgotten, and when Marlo left prison, the couple moved out of California together. Marlo had relatives in the South, and the couple began working their way through the family tree, sponging room and board where they could, and stealing off any valuables Shit. until they were finally asked to leave. Yes. And so in time, it reached the point where his relatives, you know, saw them coming and turned them away either with angry words or just gave them, like, pocket change to be like, go away. At the very end of everything, they were reduced to sleeping in the woods where Cynthia got head lice and James was forced to bathe in kerosene to rid himself of biting chiggers. Isn't kerosene um, gas? Yeah. <laughs> not it, well. It's like not gasoline, but yeah, it's like a um, a flammable liquid that people use in like lamps. <laughs> I would suggest that perhaps that is his account of things, yeah. and should be taken with a slight grain of salt. Probably. Also, I mean, maybe I'm stupid, but. How do you get head lice in the woods? Um, I don't... Like... I don't know. Don't you get head lice from other people? people? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe they're not in the woods. Maybe they're at um, a campsite. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, maybe they're not just, like, woods camping. Sleeping in a tree, but, like... (laughs) Yeah. So on July 26th, 1986, Kaufman and Marlowe were linked to the burglary of a home in Whitley County, Kentucky making off with cash, some jewelry, and a shotgun. And a few days later in Tennessee, they were married. So they are Jeez. traveling the Americas. I don't know where Kentucky and Tennessee are in relation to each other, but they're not the same state. So they are <laughs> traveling. <laughs> I think they're pretty close. Probably. They're let both me, in the South, eh? Let me look. Plus, you could drive for like four days in America and be in the same state. So, well... I don't know if that's strictly true, I mean, but... Um, it's called hyperbole, isn't it? Yes. Tennessee is just south of Kentucky. It's nice. directly south. Excellent. Chattanooga. LOL. That is a real place. We love that. Yes. Chattanooga. Um, anyway, so they were married in Tennessee, and Cynthia celebrated the occasion by having her ass tattooed with the words, I belong to the Folsom Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> like <laughs> what? I don't know. But like that That's is something crazy. that he very seriously called himself. He was the false wolf. <laughs> like yeah, I think cringe. prison nicknames prison nicknames kind of stick a lot of the time, but yeah. I would not get that tattooed on my bum hole. No, me neither. <laughs> Anyways. I wonder how big it was. Did it say scale? I don't know. I'll try to find a picture. It didn't say s- scale, but I will see if I can find a picture or, like, any information about Yeah. Because it was it. just little, like, okay, maybe if it's, like, a, a toonie size tattoo, fine, I guess. It'll fade out. You won't be able to tell what it says after ten years. But if it's, like... A whole butt cheek. That's <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> I don't know. She doesn't really have very good critical thinking skills so far. So true. I'm gonna go with full butt cheek. <laughs> <laughs> no ragrats. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so after that was done, they went west again in search of whatever. On west coast, best coast, baby. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That was cringy. <laughs> um, so I should preface by saying that there are four victims that we're going to talk about, but only two have been they've only been convicted for two murders. Okay. I couldn't find information about why. Assumably there just wasn't enough evidence for the other two, but they are like fully attributed to them, so Interesting. I don't know. I mean Two life sentences is your whole life, so. Yeah, and the one after that. Yeah, you're not likely. Like, maybe it was just a money-based decision by the courts. Yeah. How do you know they have life sentences? I don't, but I'm just assuming. Did you take a sneak peek at my episode before it was ready? No. If you murder someone, you get a life sentence, you know? In it? Well, not in California, but anyway, we'll get we'll get to that in it. I'm just being hopeful that they didn't do something shitty and then get away with it. You know? No, no. Like they didn't a lot get away of people. With it. No. Okay. Continue. Um, on the evening of October 11th, 1986, 32-year-old Sandra Neary left her home in Costa Mesa in California to obtain some cash from the ATM at her bank. And she never returned, though her car was found by police in a local parking lot. Two weeks later, on October 24th, her strangled, decomposing corpse was found by hitchhikers near Corona in Riverside County. Pamela Simmons, aged 35, was the next to die, reported missing in Bullhead City in Arizona. On October 28th, her car was found abandoned near police headquarters, detectives theorizing that she had been snatched again while drawing money from an ATM. Ten days later, on November 7th, 20-year-old Karina Novis vanished on a similar errand in Redlands, California. She had been kidnapped from an urban shopping mall in broad daylight. Shit. Um, Linnell Murray's boyfriend was worried on November 12th when the 19-year-old psychology student failed to keep a date after work. He found her car outside the dry cleaning shop where she worked in Orange County, California, but another day would pass before her naked, strangled body was discovered in a Huntington Beach motel room. In addition to kidnapping and murder, there was also evidence of sexual assault. The police had... No leads for a bit. Um, this is maybe like a side note. How does one murder somebody in a motel room and not have someone call the police on them? Because I have Mm. stayed in hotels... And heard things happening in the middle of the night between consenting adults. So why wouldn't you be able to hear someone getting murdered? You know? I Yeah, I don't know. 
Anyway, shower Perhaps thoughts. they thought it was things happening between two consenting adults, or they... I don't know, I'm speculating, but maybe they drugged her? Or maybe bystander effect, I guess, too. Yeah, but also... I don't want to be crude, but she was strangled to death. Mm. And from personal experience, you can't make much sound when you're being strangled. I see. Okay. And if, like, there's nothing around you to, like, knock off, like, a lamp or something. I don't know. It's a good point. I'd like to know the proper answer, but... Yeah. You're just going to leave us with a dark answer about your own life. And then I'll let along. you wonder about that one. <laughs> um, so again, police had pretty much no leads. And so basically we're just hoping for a break in the case. Mm-hmm. And when it came, thankfully, the case unraveled very, very swiftly. First, Karina Novus's checkbook was found in a Laguna Niguel trash dumpster. Tunk tucked inside a fast food takeout bag with papers bearing the names of Cynthia Kaufman and James Marlowe. Like, how fucking stupid can you be? Like, a checkbook of all things? Yeah. 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 Around the same time, Marlowe and Kaufman were linked to a San Bernardino motel room where the manager found stationery bearing practice signatures of Linnell Murray's name. And, you know, a glance at Marlowe's criminal record did the rest, and a statewide alert was issued for both fugitives. On November 14th, 1986, police were summoned to a mountain lodge at Big Bear City, California, where the proprietor identified his latest guests as Marlowe and Kaufman, and 100 cops found the lodge <clears throat> yeah showed up found the oh, lodge empty shit. fanning out through the woods for a sweep and they found wow. Kaufman and Marlow around 3 p.m um when they were found hitchhiking along a mountain road um there's probably more um police involvement than would maybe be expected because one of them was killed in Arizona, so it's federal, right? Because Arizona right. and California, they're two different states, so it's federal now. Um, Hot take. Hello? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Arizona and California being two different states. Oh, yeah. That's just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so they were found hiking along a mountain road. And, like, I didn't have confirmation if they were hitchhiking, like, trying to escape, Mm. or if they were just out for a nature walk. (laughs) So, I really hope it's a nature walk. And they're like, da-da-da-da-da. Just, like, ate a bunch of mushrooms, and they're just, like, wandering through the woods. (laughs) Yep. They um, both surrendered without a fight, though. But they were both wearing outfits stolen from the dry cleaning shop where Linnell Murray worked. (laughs) Within hours, Cynthia Kaufman had um, confessed, and she also led officers to a vineyard near Fontana, where they found Karina Novis, who had been sodomized and strangled and was lying in a shallow grave. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, Marlon and Kaufman were formally charged with that murder on November 17th and held for trial without bond. Homicide investigators told the press that fingerprints from both defendants had been found inside Karina's car, and Kaufman had been linked to the Fontana pawn shop where the victim's typewriter had been sold. So they also stole her stuff. And sold it for drug money, probably. Mm. So they're just being tried and charged with the murder of Karina Novis right now. Another 32 months would pass before the killer couple went to trial. Killer couple went to trial. And in the meantime, they experienced a falling out, each blaming the other for 
the plight, funny-ish anecdote, was that on one jailhouse visit, Cynthia's lawyer asked if there was anything she needed from the outside world, and she told him, pointing to her ass, you can find someone to help me lose this damn tattoo. Jesus. <laughs> and this, kids, is why you do not get your partner's name tattooed on your bum. I mean, at least it's coverable, yeah. but like... Yeah. <laughs> Right. Not only their name, but their prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Property of the Folsom Wolf. <laughs> the couple's murder trial finally opened in San Bernardino County on July 18th, 1989. Kaufman testified on her own behalf, describing her relationship with Marlo, saying, describing threats of violence towards her and Basically saying that she was a battered wife and she was afraid mm. that he would harm her or her son. So she went along with the murders to kind of, you know, appease him yeah. and to keep herself and her son safe. She presented the testimony of Dr. Lenore Walker, who is a psychologist and expert on battered women syndrome in support of her defense that she lacked the intent to kill, basically. And... Yeah, she just basically claimed that Marlowe beat her on many occasions and that he was the driving force behind the murders. Marlowe, on the other hand, stated that he only wanted to rob the women and Kaufman made him kill them and also rape them. Okay. Yeah. Both defendants were convicted and both were sentenced to death on August 30th. Cynthia Kaufman became the first woman sentenced to die in California since the state restored capital punishment in 1977. So they had it, and then they got rid of it, and then they brought it back in 77, and she was the first woman to be... Um, sentenced to death. Sentenced to death, thank you much. So yeah, there, there wasn't enough evidence to try for all four, so they were just convicted of the murder of Karina no Novis in 1990, and then they were tried and convicted in a separate trial in 1992 for the murder of Linnell Murray. Um, for that case, Marlow was given a second death penalty, and Kaufman was given a life imprisonment. I Kaufman is still on death row as of 2011. That's the most recent thing I can find about her. Can't find anything about James Marlow. So I assume he's vibing on death row also, because... I, like, I think it would have been reported if he'd been put to death. Um, yeah. I, I was going to say that, too, about both of them. Yeah. But also, um, we learned in the episode about Charles Ng and Leonard Lake that California hasn't actually put anybody on death row to death since, like, 2006 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if, if she's still there in 2011, she's, she's going to die there instead of being put to death yeah. you know yeah yeah hmm. so that is today's case Gross. yes let me know how you feel about it me <laughs> are you talking no. to the viewers <laughs> <laughs> i don't i didn't really know what i was gonna say i was gonna complain about the la times putting all of their um um <laughs> news behind a paywall yeah. Like, what are you doing, LA Times? I mean... This is news, and it's the archive stuff, so, like, why do you need to make money yeah. off, off a, a, a something that was printed in a newspaper in 1992? Like, it's been... Yeah, because yeah. the newspaper industry is dying as a result of the internet. So yeah, but they're putting it online. Cash dollars somewhere ads like the rest of us <laughs> do you know what happened to her son like where was he the whole time with his dad because if dad because if dad was abusive and mum's out getting tattoos and murdering people hopefully he had a safe place to grow up mm. I'm looking it up I can't find anything. 
So, assumably, I'm just going to hope that the son went somewhere safe and sound and has grown up and received therapy for how shitty his parents are. Yeah. Hopefully. That's, yeah. Hmm. Yes. Also, when you mentioned Big Bear, all I could think of was all those um, lifestyle influencers who go up yeah, right. skiing in Big Bear every <laughs> Christmas or whatever, and mm -hmm. um, how they went during COVID, and then everyone was pissed off at them, and they were trying to, like, justify traveling during COVID. Some of them yeah. are from Toronto to Big Bear. Yeah, right. <laughs> That was fucked. Mm -hmm. Like, people traveling during COVID anyway is like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, it's also weird, like, not weird, but, like, there's new variants of COVID, and people are still dying from it. Yeah. So, wear a mask and get vaccinated. Yes. If Please. you want to. I mean, get, not if you want to. Do it. Get do vaccinated. It and get boosted. Yeah. You're not going to be harmed by putting cloth on your face. <laughs> yes. And it protects our immunocompromised friends. Like me. Which is important. Yeah, because who else is going to tell you true crime Tuesday stories? Yeah. You know what else I can do? Tell you if two states are different. <laughs> Pretty good at that. <laughs> Tennessee and um, Kentucky, different states. Different states. Both Arizona and California, different states. <laughs> <laughs> All of the Americans have now clicked off being like, these bitches are stupid. <laughs> I'm, what do you mean? I live in Canada. <laughs> if you are a viewer in... Um, Tennessee or Kentucky if you know anything connected to this case DM mm -hmm. us yeah if you know like I don't know the priest that married them or <laughs> the uh the Taco Bell they had their honeymoon dinner at like let us know tell honestly, us honestly any case we ever cover if you have yeah. the tea also if you live in California too or Arizona yeah they are We'd some some people California is our second top state. Nice. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, friends, for listening. Do you know what we're talking about on Sunday this week? I'm not sure, but Fair. I will know by then. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can hope for. Exactly. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye! Bye.